Hello and welcome to Army of Crime, the internet's only comic book focused podcast. I am your host, Dustin, and I'm here with my other host, whose name is Matt. Hello. That was Hello. him right there. Um, Matt, what uh, comic book are we going to discuss on this episode? We're going to talk about the comic book Devil Dinosaur, Devil Dinosaur, uh, which is from 1978. Uh, this is written and drawn by Jack Kirby. This is in his period where he had left Marvel right after co-creating like a trillion dollars of IP with Stan Lee. And then he leaves Marvel uh, and goes to DC and he makes like the um, the Demon, the Fourth World, OMAC, other stuff. I can't like off the top of my head. I don't even like a bunch of stuff. And then he jumps back to Marvel in like the late 70s. Um, and he makes the Eternals he makes, um, well, Devil Dinosaur. Um, what else does he make in that period? Another Silver Surfer graphic novel. He worked on, did some more Captain America. Yeah, yeah. So kind of his, like, second run at Marvel, where they gave him a lot more creative um, control and, like, writing and drawing. It would actually be more like his fourth run at Marvel, but who's counting? Oh, if we count his, right, like, because he drew, yeah, Captain America all the way back. Three or, three or four, yeah, yeah, it's it's quite the quite the career, obviously. I mean, he's Jack Kirby. Um, so, Devil Dinosaur is a is an interesting one, right? I'd actually never read it before. Um, it it <laughs> it's a comic book starring a dinosaur, as the title would uh, would inform you, uh, and like a small, hairy little um, like ape person named Moon Boy, yes. Moon Boy and Devil Dinosaur. Um, and you might say that's kind of a strange premise for a comic book. And sure, it is, but it's like kind of awesome, right? Yeah. So it's Devil Dinosaur is a red Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Moon Boy is like, uh, like early, an early man, that little hairy monkey guy. Moon Boy and Devil Dinosaur are best pals, and Moon Boy rides around on Devil Dinosaur, and they have adventures. Yeah, and this kind of fits in with, uh, like. Because in, in the Eternals, he had this concept of, like, you know, the ancient aliens that helped found humanity. And that's not, I mean, that's not necessarily what's in here, but there's something about, like, deep history or some kind of, like, ancient unknown history that I yeah. think that I think is kind of rumbling around in Kirby's brain. And I think there's also, I feel like there's a connection to um, his 2001 A Space Odyssey comic, which has never been collected in anything. I don't know if that's because of a rights issue, but again, this is some, some kind of concept of like unknown, the unknown deep history of humanity. Well, that's, yeah, I was going to say that on the surface, you might think that, you know, Jack Kirby is most known for doing superhero books, and you might think that a series about a dinosaur is sort of an odd leap. Well, once you you know, are reading Devil Dinosaur, it actually touches on many of his sort of pet themes that he worked through over and over again throughout his career, including, like you were saying, this idea of, like, uh, the origins of, like, ancient myths and how they get retold throughout history and sort of change form. And the other thing, um, which you mentioned, too, which is features heavily in the Eternals, which is this uh, ancient astronaut kind of uh, idea of aliens visiting prehistoric Earth and having some sort of influence on, you know, the, the coming uh, human race and history. Um, so, yeah, it touches on both of those things. I mean, it kind of starts out as Devil Dinosaur is like the ruler of this like valley where this title is set and he kind of like fights other dinosaurs and other, there's like up varying like tribes of early men. There's the hill folk and the little people, and they're like different groups of early humans. Um, but I think it only takes like three or four issues before like the aliens show up and yeah, things start to get four. like really trippy. Issue four is when the aliens show up. Yeah. So, and it's interesting too because it's kind of like a flip on something like the Eternals, where the aliens show up and instead of like prodding, the early human race into like a greater life form, like seeding early life on earth. Their kind of goal is like the opposite. They like sense potential in what might become the human race. And thus they set out to destroy it. 
So they're like sort of like the early ancient astronauts idea, except sort of flipped around so that they're like malevolent and violent instead. Yeah. And I think you get kind of a um, another connection you could make is maybe to like the old Atlas era, like giant monster comics, because yeah. you've got, you got the giant ants. And you got like, you know, obviously there's like dinosaurs duking it out um, and there's like a giant spider. So I think you can kind of see the the pedigree of a lot of previous things um, that Kirby had worked on kind of all like kind of leading into this this nine issue uh, dinosaur comic. And I have to say, um, I actually like Kirby, you know, Kirby's art from this period is obviously it's great. I think it's like the best Kirby art, right? Like when he when he comes back. When he's at DC, um, and then he goes back to Marvel, like Fourth World, um, you know, into Commandy, uh, you know, the Demon, Devil Dinosaur, Eternals. Like his figures are just great. Um, he he does a lot of four and five panels. It's very cinematic. It, it's you know the dialogue is like the Kirby. I don't know where I heard the phrase, but like the Kirby word jazz, <laughs> which is I mean it's good. It, it's a comic book. It doesn't have to be realistic. It's it's it works right. It it works for the medium. Um, and you've just got like a lot of fun concepts. There's like an evil computer, um, that makes like a paradise world. You've got like the different tribes of humans. They're like riding other creatures that are like capturing dinosaurs and stuff. It's interesting in the letters column too. He talks about how, um, you know, he knows that humans and dinosaurs didn't coexist. Right. But, but he what if they did? With, right. But, but what if they did? Well, what if they did? Right. What if humans and dinosaurs coexist? And of course they're not true humans in this, um, like Moonblaze, like a little hobbit or something. Yeah, they're like early humans. But yeah, this is a, uh, you know, Kirby's art as his career went on, I think became, which I suppose is true for many artists, becomes more like idiosyncratic and more distinctly Kirby-esque as time went on. So in the late 70s, you're kind of getting sort of like the peak, like Kirby, Esque art that's like extremely distinctive and extremely unique looking and he does this great thing where it's all like you mentioned um very like uh powerful straightforward like action storytelling where each comic book starts on like a full splash page and then you turn the page and there's like a double splash page like action sequence so it's like it's very uh fun it's like a very fun read with these like uh oddball like high concept ideas shrink them throughout like yeah you're talking about the um there's a story where there's a woman named eve spelled e-e-v and there's like an evil computer that creates basically like a garden of eden so he's he's like we were saying he's uh laying out like a, an early version of like a garden of eden myth uh in this comic book entitled devil dinosaur yeah and he throws some time travel in there um, right towards the end. Um, and like so many Kirby, I feel like a lot of this period, like everything's getting canceled. Yeah, he did not have a lot of luck with like long running series that really caught on, it would seem. So this is like nine issues and then it got canned. Um, so who knows where he would have eventually like taken this thing. Yeah, it's like a like a lone wolf and cub or like a fistful of dollars premise where it's just they can just walk into any adventure they're just like walking the earth yeah so with his you know the the giant monsters you know the robots aliens i think you could have seen a lot of interesting stuff it's pretty wide open it's a pretty wide open premise and yeah you, you get to the end and there's like this weird old-timey font that just says something like the chronicle concludes or something um and you're like well i guess that's the end it's you know it's like the eternals um a lot of those they just they just ran out of steam i guess um, the the sales just weren't there, which which is a bummer. What was your favorite? What's your favorite part of this? Because I like you know what I liked was the the Garden of Eden thing was kind of fun. I like the idea of just um, the giant ants. Like there's a part where they're and it's like if you say this out loud, it just sounds so wacky. Like um, two of the furry pre-human people have to help Devil Dinosaur defeat the space aliens by marshaling an army of giant ants. Yes. Like that's um, that's a premise. Like, well, I think, and that's contained in this story that I'm going to mention. But uh, issue four, called "Objects from the Sky," is yeah, I where think, the aliens show up. A pretty clear highlight because, like, it starts out and you have on the first page, 
is a full splash page where you have Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy in the foreground. And then behind it, behind them is this like archetypal Kirby machine, a strange alien thing that's like a, I don't know, it looks kind of like a caterpillar, but it's like black with like spikes on it. Oh, yeah. It's like coming through a wormhole or something. Yeah. And then you turn the page and you get like a full splash page of these dinosaurs. And then the background is all these like Kirby dots and like flaming eyes and this weird like leering grin with, yeah, this like giant space lizard creature like leaping over the horizon that I guess is supposed to be the alien spacecraft like crash landing on Earth. Because why not, man? It's a comic book. Like, just put it out there. Yeah, so this, and then this issue, yeah, is these aliens are like uh, cataloging the creatures on Earth and they capture Moon Boy for studying. So it's all about Devil Dinosaur, who it should be mentioned never talks um, because right. he's a dinosaur. Right. Uh, but he's also like much more intelligent than a regular dinosaur. So yeah. it's all about like Devil Dinosaur trying to figure out how to defeat uh, these aliens. Yeah. And that's like, I think, a two or three part story that also features the uh, uh, giant ants as well. Right, right. And, you know, I wouldn't think that I would like it. I was I was skeptical, but, like, the time travel story is fun. They introduce some kind of, like, area. There's, like, a location where there's, like, portals or something. Yeah. And you, you can end up in, like, different realities or different timelines. A lot There's a lot of storytelling potential there. And there's, like, a witch, and she can, like, do spells or something. Um, or she can, like, manipulate whatever these portals are from. Yeah, that's, and the last story right before it got canned, they encounter this, like, witch who ends up teleporting. Well, she doesn't really do it, but there's, like, yeah, some kind of uh, evil portal thing that teleports Devil Dinosaur into the future. And it looks like, I'm not sure, but it, it kind of looks like the, the cover for issue nine is not drawn by Jack Kirby. Am I wrong? I don't see any credit for who drew it, but it doesn't look like him. That's neither here nor there, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a shame that, like, I don't know if it was just because people only wanted, like, superhero comics for Marvel. I mean, at the time and now, I suppose for the most part that this like didn't catch on, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty much exactly kind of what you'd want from this kind of comic book in that it's like nonstop action with lots of like heady ideas kind of like sprinkled throughout. Yeah. And... It's like a, a dinosaur themed high fantasy. And I don't know if the premise, like maybe he just really wanted to draw a lot of dinosaurs, you know, nothing wrong with that. Well, was this, was there like a dinosaur thing going on at the time? I, I know there was like a King Kong remake in like the late 70s. So, yeah. I, I don't know if there was, I, like I can't recall Like a resurgence of like giant monster ideas. Um, yeah. That's a good question. I, I feel like there's a strong connection here with his 2001 A Space Odyssey comic, which came out a couple years before. Yeah. Because that came out, because that comic, and if they ever release a trade of that, I will buy it because I remember it being really good. I think you own the issues of it, don't you? It's like super, it's like yeah. pretty expensive if you go and buy it. But it, but it's based on the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey and it has them like going into like the deep past and like encountering like fantasy sci-fi concepts. So I feel like this is kind of a connection to that. Like, like it really kind of made me think of it. It's, it's not really that similar storyline wise, but the, the idea that like there's this deep past where like, you know, humanity is being played out in some kind of drama that's not immediately recognizable, but the, when you when you scratch under the surface, it kind of is. And right. and you talk about you know people want superheroes. I mean, the Devil Dinosaur is basically a superhero. Like you know, he's like the Hulk or something. You know, you, you know, kind of writ large conceptually, right? It's not like this is an alien concept, right? Like th like there's supernatural stuff. Um, yeah, and, and there's he, lots and of he action. kind of draw the connection between like the Hulk and like Rick Jones or something. Yeah, and though it's also fair to mention that you're talking about a connection to 2001: A Space Odyssey, but that those ideas clearly have had a fascination for Kirby for a long time because that goes back to like the Eternals right. and like the Inhumans. Right. You know, he didn't get the idea from 2001, uh, certainly, but that's probably why he made or why they why 2001 interested him. Right, why 2001 interested him. And then I feel like this was something, you know, he was kind of still 
I mean, because like, two thousand the same time period he made two thousand one Space Odyssey, Eternals, and and this. Yeah. So there's clearly something going on there. Right. No, for sure. It's clearly yeah. like riffing around on some of the same ideas. That's that's what that's what I love about that that time period where he leaves Marvel. You know, you go DC, you got Demon, Fourth World, OMAC, Commandy, and then you know you go back to Marvel, Eternals, two thousand one, Devil Dinosaur. Like he's just you know swinging for the fences. That's all new stuff. Yeah, it's it is sort of like a period of uh, unbridled creativity that was then unfortunately bridled by uh, poor sales and cancellations. Yeah, would do much better. I mean, now now would be the kind of time where you can do probably get away with more stuff like that. But yeah, you, you're looking at like the newsstands, the comic stores as a concept are very new. Probably a tough sell. Devil Dinosaur, probably a tough sell, I'm guessing, for the newsstands. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. It did not. It would have been just like with all those other stories, it would have been fascinating to see where they went. Because as I recall, The Eternals, which we recorded another podcast episode about, also kind of like just, uh, seems to have like a completely arbitrary ending where they're like, well, that's all, folks. Fortunately, there's not like a four issue story where Devil Dinosaur fights the Hulk. Uh, fights a that, Hulk robot. Yeah, because that really kind of dragged down the Eternals. Yeah, yeah. No, I like Devil Dinosaur a lot. I would definitely recommend it. And it's cool because you could read it and you don't have to know. I mean, there's this idea, and this is what we're talking about, is that he made a lot of new stuff in this time period. But the idea that you got to know all these characters and and whatever, I mean... You, it's it's a pretty you pick up the premise from just looking at the cover it's like a dinosaur <laughs> it's about a dinosaur named and there's a monkey it's in the title it's like pretty much what it what it looks like yeah it's it's what it what it says on the tin it's a, um do, do you want to know here's some deep cut um marvel nerd continuity that came bubbling from the back of my brain when i was reading this okay um according to i think it's one of the earth x series which I believe I once proposed as a topic and you shot down immediately. Um, I believe they they made some kind of continuity thing that Wolverine was one of the small folk. Okay. And not actually a, a human mutant. Okay, that's and, and that's somehow related to Moon Boy, I guess. Or connected to Moon Boy. Seems like a stretch. Yeah, I don't know. That's... Well, I know they've done uh, a Devil Dinosaur reboot nowadays, yeah. but I feel like, and I haven't read it, so maybe it's fantastic. But to me, the premise of this is kind of cool, but, you know, the the appeal of it is just that it's Jack Kirby. Yeah. You know, if it was some other people making a comic book about a dinosaur having wacky adventures, it'd be a, a much harder sell, I think, but... I actually have read some of the of the new series, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. And I mean, it's kind of fun. It's it's the, the he gets tr brought into the future. And and then Moon Girl is like a girl genius who like invents gadgets and they just kind of have adventures. It, it's it's a lot different than this. Is Moon Boy in it? No, no, no. It's it's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. So Devil Dinosaur gets brought into the future through like a time warp or something. Yeah, and but where's Moon, Moon Boy? I don't think I don't know if Moon Boy is in it. I think. They just like retconned away Moon Boy. No, I don't think they retconned him. I think he just he just he just didn't go through the time warp. So he was in the bathroom when the time warp happened. Yeah. I, I, so I don't know if at some point he goes. You know, maybe at the end of the series, Devil Dinosaur goes back and has more adventures with Moon Boy or whatever. Uh, any other concluding thoughts on Jack Kirby's Devil Dinosaur? I find myself there's something in the there's something in like the human psyche uh, from like being. Um, you know, like a teenager way back in the day where it just kind of is awesome that there's just a comic book starring a red Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, it's I believe definitely... He's, I believe he's red because he gets caught in a fire or something. It's not like a super <laughs> explained I think there's phenomenon. something about like a, there's lava or like a volcano explosion and something that like turns him red through some like heat. Because I yeah. think he's like immune to fire or something like that. Yeah. Is he's kind of small for a Tyrannosaurus. I don't know if that's actually explained ever or not. Because Moon Boy sits on his back, and Moon Boy is actually smaller than a regular human. But, I mean, I don't know. Who cares? It's it's just kind of awesome. Yeah, it definitely has a great, like, lizard brain id uh, awesomeness to it. Of just, like, what if there was just a giant-ass dinosaur who went around kicking the snot out of everything? Yeah, I notice he kicks a lot of things. Uh, it's very, like, PG. He doesn't, like, bite them or eat them. 
It he, almost he, makes he me wonder. He by kicking. And it almost makes me wonder if Devil Dinosaur is supposed to be like a vegetarian. That would be interesting. I feel like it's more just to keep the rating down, right? That he's not just like ripping people in half. But I mean, that would be kind of fun. Because because there's one the only part I think where it actually shows him eating is where Devil Dinosaur gives him some or where Moon Boy gives him some kind of fruit to eat. Oh, that would be interesting. And then there's one part where he like saves them by picking up an ant in his mouth and then like dropping it in a cavern instead of like crushing it. Yeah. It almost made me think that he's some kind of like thoughtful, pacifistic vegetarian dinosaur. Yeah. It kind of also made me think of, do you remember the Super Nintendo game Primal Rage? I do, yes. It gave me some thoughts of that. Like the idea that he's a dinosaur and he's like practicing his judo kicks on people. <laughs> he does have those giant legs and his right. um, tiny arms. Right, so it only makes sense. Is it kicking? Though his hands also seem to have, his tiny arms seem to have opposable thumbs because he can like pick things up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, not really explained. Right. But it doesn't have to be because it's cool. Right. It it doesn't have to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be explained because it's because it's rad as hell. That's right. So that was another episode of the Internet's only comic book podcast, Army of Crime. Yeah. The uh, people Matt, demanded the people demanded more podcasts. That's what our world is lacking. There's a severe is, podcast is, shortage. Is numerical there. numerical quantity of podcasts. And and so we answered the call. Matt, what should people do and or know about this podcast after they've done listening to it? Uh, they should know that we're awesome. Okay. They should also know. I mean, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Army of Crime. Dustin is at Dustin4444. Website is armyofcrime.com where we have the archives. Uh, you can catch us on, I mean, your, your friendly neighborhood caster of pods. I think that about does it. Stay alive out there, everyone. Did you hear that sound that my computer made?